you guys, I don't really like doing a whole lot of oil burner work, but I do it because we still have a lot of it in our area. Uh, but what I really despise is a Beckett AF2 burner. They are horrible. And my plan today was to take an AF2 out and put a AFG in its place, uh, but I can't get all the stuff in place to, to make that work. Um, the air tube combination and stuff like that. So um, what I'm gonna do is rebuild the AF2 that they have. So I'm gonna run up to the supply house now, um, get a new motor, pump. Um, the transformer's probably okay, but uh, if they have a transformer, I'll get the transformer too. And we're gonna rebuild this AF2 burner. And I already put the, the board on it and uh, I think we are going to get this customer back up and going. So hit that like button and let's get going. All right. So all this is going to go. I tried to get a new wheel. Couldn't get it. So all this is getting replaced right here. All right. I'm building the new motor and uh, pump now. I'm doing it off of it. So I want to show you guys a little trick that I do. So you don't, whenever you're using a fitting like this, um, and you don't want to booger up the threads when you tighten it down. Just put your 3 8 flat nut on that end and then go ahead and tighten it down. So now I can grab this any way I want and tighten it. All right, moving right along, just pulled the nozzle out. Uh, got a new nozzle here. It's a pretty small one, 0.50 EDB. But yep, got the new motor and pump mounted. Um, yeah, moving right along. All right, I got my oil lines hooked up. Um, I'm about to change my uh, Garber spin-on filter there. Um, I haven't hooked this up yet because I need to set my pump pressure to 140 PSI. That's what it calls for on that data plate right there. Go ahead and focus. This pump set at 140 PSI, so. Um, I'm sure it's only set for like 1, 120 right now. Um, so I'll set that and uh, yeah, a couple more connections here and we should be in good shape. I've got the Tiger Loop up here. Um, yeah, so I'm about to take off that Garber spin on and I got a new one right cha. Yeah. All right, and usually never get a good grip on them. So I got this filter wrench here that I use. Usually put it around there and then I can get a good grip on it. There we go. All right. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. I think I got her bled out pretty good. We just got to set this pump pressure to 140. test and all that. It actually went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to go, but um, here we are, and there it 
segments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. All right, we're back here with a new draft inducer. A few weeks ago, we found a uh, stock contactor which froze the unit up, but we also had a bad draft inducer. So, back here today, place the draft inducer. It's windy, it's cold. We'll try to do our best. All right, here's the draft inducer right here. It should be pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, so we'll open up the box, make sure we got the same draft inducer, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad. It's got it right there. So yeah, it's got uh, the sensor here and our power wire. So all right, we got her unwired. Um, our yellow and brown went here. Our purple went up here. And then um, this sensor wire right here just kind of plugged in right there. So. Now we just gotta take out the screws. All right, we got our old one off. We're just gonna clean a lot of this old gasket material off. Make sure we got a nice clean space to work with when we go back. Put the new one on. All right, we got our new motor in. Now we just gotta wire it up. So we got our purple wire landed here. We got brown and yellow to land, and then this sensor wire. Alright, we got her in and looking pretty. 